Hey everybody, this is Dave Humpers from hpylorisymptoms.com and uh, in this video, a very short video hopefully, I know I can go on a little bit but this one's going to be very short I assure you, uh, just to teach you how you picked up H. pylori. One of the questions that I get asked most often is, well, you know, how did I get this bug? How did it get into my system? Um, I don't understand. I've, I've, you know, I've not had any food poisoning. I've not, uh, I just don't see why it's there. And the answer is quite difficult because I think people can pick this bug up in different ways. The medical literature suggests that most people pick H. pylori up uh, in childhood. And it may not cause symptoms for a while, but then uh, all of a sudden it starts to rear its ugly head and cause a bunch of problems. Um, other people think that perhaps uh, it comes on contaminated food and you have a, a period of food poisoning where you're kind of uh, throwing up and you feel terrible, nausea, diarrhea and all that kind of stuff. And that's when H. pylori gets into your system. And so it, it, it's quite difficult to delineate and tell you exactly how you picked up H. pylori, um, but what I'll try and do is look at the possibilities so that you get a better idea and maybe you can think back about how it might have got into your system. So, number one, um, a lot of people believe that H. pylori is picked up by eating contaminated food or by drinking water that has been contaminated either by fecal matter or by the bacterium. Now, uh, well water, um, food that has had things like cockroaches and flies on it, uh, food that has been washed or treated in uh, manure or uh, fecal matter could potentially harbour H. pylori and so that is a potential transmission route. Um, maybe you had a bad restaurant experience, maybe you had a food poisoning issue when you were on holiday uh, that's how I think I picked my H. pylori up. I had a really nasty bout of uh, sickness and diarrhea when I went on a scuba diving holiday in Egypt, for example. So food and water are, I'll put H2O for water, food and water are two of the most common uh, transmission routes, we think, for H. pylori. Um, another transmission route is kissing. A lot of scientists think that kissing uh, can cause passing of H. pylori between people because H. pylori has been isolated in um, the oral cavity, in dental plaque um, and in the oral cavity in general. So if you kiss someone who has H. pylori in their mouth, then, uh, you know, unfortunately, there's a chance that you might pick up the infection as well. Now, this is really interesting because I regularly run testing on my clients and what we find is that if one person in the couple has H. pylori, the other one does as well. So that supports the possibility that uh, there is some kind of transmission going on between kissing and possibly sexual contact as well. Third transmission route. Places like daycare centres. Anywhere where there are children and there is nappy changing, diaper changing, things like that has the potential to pass on digestive infections of any kind. So anytime people are uh, in contact with uh, fecal matter. Where else may we pick up H. pylori? Well, bizarrely and somewhat ironically, there is research that shows um, H. pylori can be picked up when medical staff do not clean hospital equipment properly. Um, I've read studies that have shown uh, endoscopy equipment, which is where they lie you on your side and they put a camera down your throat, in your mouth and down your throat to look at what's happening in your digestive system. Um, if that's not cleaned properly and you happen to have the endoscopy after someone who's had H. pylori, there's a chance that you could pick the H. pylori up. So you're going in for a test to look at your digestive health and inadvertently you're picking up the H. pylori potentially um, at the same time. So that's an interesting one. So I'll just put hospitals on there. And uh, just a couple more quickly. Research seems to suggest that mother to baby transmission is quite important in, uh, in the transmission of H. pylori as well. Um, studies have shown that the exact same genetic strain of H. pylori can be found in the children uh, as the mother. Okay, so they have the same genetic identical strain indicating that one was passed to the other. I haven't seen any uh, evidence that breastfeeding can cause to it being passed on, um, but certainly the mother to uh, the mother to child transmission route is, is, is likely 
Okay, so mother to child is another one. Um, and then finally, kind of similar to the kissing, bearing in mind that H. pylori can live in the oral cavity, um, some studies have indicated, in fact, one study in particular showed that uh, H. pylori could survive on chopsticks even when the chopsticks had been washed up properly, the H. pylori was still there. So potentially, if someone else uses the chopsticks after the infected person, um, they may pick up the H. pylori as well. So things like eating and drinking utensils may provide a reservoir for H. pylori transmission as well. So just to recap, if you have H. pylori, you could conceivably have picked it up in any of these routes. Food and water, maybe at a restaurant or when you're on holiday, potentially where the sanitation was not so good. Kissing or sexual contact, daycare centers or close contact with children, hospitals through certain procedures, mother to child and eating and drinking, sharing eating and drinking utensils with people who are infected as well. Um, so my name is Dave Hompez. I hope this has been useful for you. If you want further information on H. pylori, please feel free to visit my website, hpylorisymptoms.com. Thanks very much and see you next time.